Hello everyone, welcome to my channel today. I'm Tara with Piece of Tara Artistry. Thank you for joining me. So this is the piece that I'm going to be sharing with you guys today and I'm going to be sharing with you some detailed instructions on how I made this. Um, it was actually featured on Shelly Carruthers, Shelly Art Channel, uh, as part of the December Piggy Switcheroo. And um, so I thought I would put it here on my channel so you guys can all hear me talk through exactly what I did. And if you are following along with the switcheroo, in my last video, I had Miss Jessica Winterstrom was featured on my channel. So that was the switcheroo. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that and let's get into this now. So this one was inspired by uh, Cos Creations, Kathleen Osmore. And this is the pouring medium that she uses. It's Floetrol and Liquitex pouring medium mixed 50-50 with a squirt of GAC. Now this is just an Amsterdam titanium white that I already had pre-mixed, so I just used it with my regular pouring medium. This is the Satin Enamel in Pure White. Uh, I mixed it with that first pouring medium and that will be part of the clouds. This is the Triart Liquids Pains Gray. Um, this, uh, and that, that was in the, the, the liquid. This is the high viscosity in the titanium white from Triart. And I mixed that with Floetrol. I'll use that in the waves. Now, this is a mix between the Triart White and a little bit, just a, a drop or two of the Triart Paints Gray. And then I took that Sky Blue Light and I tinted it with the um, this Triart Paints Gray, just a drop or two to change the color a little bit. This is just the straight titanium, or um, I'm sorry, Sky Blue Light from Amsterdam. This is my piggy I used. You'll see this in the end. That's Abalone from TLP. It's a beautiful color shift, kind of a gold, yellow, blue, green shift to it. It's beautiful. And then this is the uh, pigment Sapphire by This Little Pigment. So I have this separated into three sections, uh, the sky, then the water, and then the embellishments. So we're gonna work on this guy here. I'm just gonna do a flip cup, um, adding in these colors that I shared with you um, in the intro. The only color that's different is I did add in a very, very light blue, uh, which was basically um, the Amsterdam, or no, the Triart Titanium White mixed with just a tiny, tiny bit of the sky blue light. So just so you know that. Now I did pierce the top of that to kind of let it float over the colors um, in the canvas a little bit easier. And now this is a very, very slow tilting process. So you wanna be really, really methodical and just take your time Get the composition that you like. Um, this one took me a little while and you'll see that I end up swiping some. Um, but here I'm going to do a second cup for that upper area. I'm liking the way this is looking so far. And I did make a bit of a mistake when I did this upper area uh, when I flipped it over and I pierced it for some reason it wasn't wanting to float very well and I was wondering what why the paint wasn't coming out and then I realized it was all still suctioned into the cup so I have a very small amount of paint on one side and a large amount on the other so I had to kind of rock this a little bit typically you want to continue to just do side to side tilts but on this one I had to kind of tilt up a little bit to um, make sure that I could cover that other side of the canvas as well so um, but yeah you typically want to keep your um, push pins on the table and tilt from side to side 
So I'm just looking at my composition and I'm not liking that kind of blue, um, kind of that darker blue section that uh, is going across the sky right now. Um, and sorry for the glare on from my lights. Um, but yeah, I, there we go. I had to just swipe it because it drove me crazy, um, which I like it a lot better. And so that kind of gave me some more um, uh, bravery to start swiping this top area a little bit uh, in areas that I didn't really like it. Um, so I kind of went over this quite a few times and I wasn't really loving how that was turning out. So you'll see that I do tilt in a little bit, but I didn't, I realized down at the bottom there, I wasn't quite hitting the tape. So I needed to make sure that I um, smooth that area down uh, near the horizon line um, a little bit. So now I'm gonna tilt and, <clears throat> excuse me, you can see that in that area I just swiped, the paint is, there's very little paint left on the canvas, so it's not really moving very quickly, so I was trying to help, in, help it along there. So after I was satisfied with that, now I went on to the water. I waited a little bit to start, let that uh, horizon line start drying a little bit, because I thought it would be easier and the horizon wouldn't bleed into the sky from the water and as I started putting paint down I realized it was kind of pushing up anyways it wasn't a big deal I knew that once it dried I could fix that horizon line so I didn't get too excited about it but yeah typically that's um, I uh, I did this one other time and I waited about 45 minutes and it worked out a lot better to start swiping or put that top area of the horizon down because it didn't bleed into the sky. So anyway, just as a side note there. So I'm using the lightest paint towards the shore and I'm just swiping back and forth. So what was happening is my paints, my light, my lighter colors which had titanium white in them were sinking which was creating some cool lacing but I didn't want there to be a lot of lacing in that with that dark blue so I brought that dark blue down just a little too far I should have um, used the lighter blues as it got closer but now I'm just trying to compensate for that by tilting off side to side. And you'll see that I do continue to swipe until the cows come home. So <laughs> I'm gonna let you watch the swiping. Um, I do add in some more colors here uh, just to kind of cover up some of that darker area and then I swiped and then you'll see um, you know after I s finish swiping here I do where that white negative space is down there at the bottom I do add in just white paint here in a second and the reason why I did that is because I wanted, well, I'll show you a little bit later too, another reason, but I wanted to swipe that blue over that white a little bit at the bottom to kind of create a foamy area. And you can see I'm using the Tri-Art White that has the Aussie Floetrol mixed in it. So I'm not sure if you can see very well that it is lacing and causing the foamy little bit of a foamy effect down there and that was part of the reason why I did that so I am going to let you continue watching this I do add some paint to my uh, little uh, paper towels strips uh, as I'm swiping to add in 
more color and to cover up some of that darker stuff. So again, you guys continue to watch and I'll pop back in in a minute. Okay, so let's go back in now and clean up that horizon line. So I did tape it off. I am using the Triart Payne's Great directly out of the bottle. And I kind of switched the orientation here for you guys so that you guys can see what I'm doing. And I love using these Triart uh, liquids, um, especially when I'm touching up like a fluid art painting because it doesn't leave any brush marks because it's such a low viscosity. So just something to think about. Now, what I'm doing is in that white area at the bottom, I just used um, the Fluid Titan Buff from Golden and I mixed it with a little bit of water to make a wash. And now I'm using my fan brush and just brushing in that sandy area at the bottom kind of going up into the blue area a little bit um, to show the wave coming over the sand a little bit. Now I am going to use the Triart Modeling Paste. Um, it is clear, so I'm adding in the Amsterdam Titanium White to that, and I'm going to mix it up, and now I'm going to start creating the waves. So I'm using my palette knife here. And I'm just using the side of my palette knife and I'm using different sizes to get those little waves in the back that are much farther away. And then as the waves get closer, obviously our perspective is closer. So the waves get bigger as they get closer. Now, full disclosure, I wish I had kept that back section clear of the waves but by the time I really thought a lot about it it was already starting to dry and so then I just went with it but I wish I would have kept that darker area um, without waves because as things get farther away you can't really see the waves that well when you look at reference photos so that is one thing that I would change so you're going to see me continue to work this uh, beach area, the surf area. Uh, when you see me adding quite a bit of that texture modeling paste to the crest area, I actually will take my palette knife and I'll actually push down and pull up, which will create uh, a crest on that wave. So... If you see me kind of working in the crest areas, that's what I'm doing. See, like right there, push down and pull up, um, and then that will create the crest of those waves. So I'm just kind of filling in some foamy areas, and um, I just continue to work this. And what's nice is that if there's an area that I didn't like, I could just very easily wipe it off. Uh, with a wet paper towel. So um, just so you guys know, this um, texture technique is something that I will be teaching at the Fluid Art Experience. I won't be teaching these landscape swipes. Uh, Kathleen, she does a fabulous job with this class. I was able to take it 
in August at PORCON, uh, at least the first hour of it. And she is just a wealth of knowledge on how to make um, these landscape swipes successful. And so um, I'm not teaching that because I, <laughs> she's the expert in that. But I will be sharing with you a class that's all about texture and using diff the types of materials that will be best used for different techniques. So I've been doing a ton of experimenting. Um, I've been playing with all sorts of modeling paste and joint compound and um, extra heavy gel gloss. Uh, to see which ones work best for which technique. And there are certain wor ones that work better uh, for uh, a, a certain technique. So I will be sharing all the knowledge that I have acquired in my experimenting and in the classes that I've actually taken, because I've actually taken several classes over the last few months on texture and I'm really loving it. So uh, I look forward to sharing that with you at the Fluid Art Experience May 23rd through 25th uh, of 2024. That is going to be in Asheville, North Carolina. So bringing it a little towards the East Coast this time, which is gonna be so fun. Can't wait to go there. I've never spent time there. I've only driven through, so I'm really, really excited to go check it out. So um, again, if you guys want more information on that, you can go to the website, fluidartexperience.com. The link to that is in the description below, as well as the link to a lot of these products that I use. They come from Fluid Art Co., which they have tons of products that are really high quality products. We've got the TLP pigments, you've got uh, these uh, new liquid paints by TriArt, uh, they're TriArt high viscosity paints, Amsterdam paints, PBO paints, um, the pouring mediums, and uh, the this TriArt uh, modeling paste, um, resins, resin molds, pour boards. It really is a one-stop shop. Um, all of the, the mixing sticks and my palette knives have all come from there. So definitely check them out. I know they will be running a sale here this coming up week on the TriArt liquid. So if you have not tried them, definitely check out that sale because uh, it's they're fantastic paints. They are my new favorites to use. I use them in my pearl pores and I especially love them because you only need a very little bit in your pouring mediums. Um, they go a long way and they're also great for mixing up uh, some colors that are custom colors because you can start with a base car, uh, color and then add to it just a little bit at a time to get the color that you want. So definitely check them out. Now what I'm doing now is I've got some of this uh, modeling paste mixture on the end of a natural sponge and I'm just kind of adding that in which is causing a little bit of that surf bubbly look um, and some texture there in that surf. And then and then now I'm going to kind of add in an outline there with the edge of my palette knife where the surf meets the sand and kind of flattens out, just kind of outlining that area with that, that uh, modeling paste again, causing a little bit more dimension and a little more texture. And then you'll see that I'll continue to um, add in in that area kind of lines where the surf is going to come in and just adding in some more depth in there and then in a minute you're going to see me I am going to um, 
add some of that texture paste to the Titan buff and I added in a little bit of sand to that mixture and you're gonna see me use my sponge and I'm just gonna sponge in that beach area that whole mixture of the sand with the uh, texture paste so here this is what I'm doing kind of adding in a little bit of texture on the bottom there Okay, so it's kind of hard to know when to stop <laughs> when you're doing this um, so I'm just kind of creating a little bit more dimension there and now I am going back and you can see I'm using that this little piggy pigment abalone that I had mixed up in the pouring medium and I'm using my fan brush and I'm just lightly brushing it over that lighter area to give it a little bit of a turquoise -y, um, uh, look. Now this pigment kind of has like a shift from like gold to turquoise to a bit of a yellow. So even though you can't see it very well there, when you kind of hit it from the side, you can see now where that's showing up. And this wasn't quite dry yet so once it dries it shows up a little bit more too but I love how that looks in the surf there I think it just looks so pretty so thank you guys for being here let me know in the comments what you think um, these are the dry results here of the sky and um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this one and thank you, Kathleen, for inspiring this. I hope you guys have a great day. And I'll see you on the next one.